When Panasonic dropped the Lumix Lab app, they unironically made the best camera app ever. And not just for quick, no editing photos, but it can also be used with your computer in super professional ways as well. And it secretly works with every camera, which means older Lumix cameras that aren't officially supported, as well as any camera from any manufacturer. And I'm gonna talk about that all, as well as the early access I got to a new update, which brings a interesting new feature, which we'll talk about a little as well. So at the end of the day, I just haven't heard anyone talk about Lumix Lab in this way, specifically with how I've been using it. So whether you're doing quick, casual turnaround photos, or whether you're working in professional video or photo editing software, and even if you don't own a Lumix camera at all, I almost guarantee you are gonna learn something in this video that can improve or help your workflow or unlock a new avenue of creativity, something along those lines. So I'm gonna be breaking this video into chapters. First, where I look at how Lumix Lab was intended to be used for the quick turnaround stuff, the no editing stuff. And in the second chapter, I'm gonna be talking about how to use this in my professional software. I use Adobe, but I think this is gonna work with pretty much any software compatible with LUTs. And the big benefit of using it in a dedicated piece of software is to unlock the full potential of these amazing cameras, whether it's shooting raw or log video and raw photos, which just has insane image quality compared to any, even the best JPEGs. But first, editing or not editing with Lumix Lab. At its heart, this app has a gallery of LUTs created by Lumix, professional photographers and videographers around the world. We have nice categories like creator LUTs, new LUTs, regional popular LUTs, which you can preview and download. After that, you can either edit the photos in your gallery on the app, which, you know, once you transfer it from your camera or your phone, which means in app, you can edit a photo from pretty much anywhere. Pretty neat. I like the editing layout here a lot too, with three main options that I would actually pretty much use in the order presented, which is like first putting a LUT to start out with, second, getting into the more granular adjustments for light and color and all that stuff. And lastly is the tools, which have some interesting options here as well, like noise reduction, cropping, and an interesting frame option, which could be great for social media posts, or even for these own YouTube videos with being able to display your settings from your capture in the metadata, which is easier than me doing it in Premiere on an image by image basis. And there's actually a way to batch export settings for, you know, multiple photos. So let's do a filter here and then let's add a frame on here for like social media. Let's do one to one, for example. So we can do that, go back, and it should be updated. So now we will do select, select this guy, copy edits. Now we select the other two photos, paste edits, and you can see this one might need a little bit of boost in exposure here. But besides that, these all have the same filter and the same border applied. And then you can export those or share those easily as well. But I think it's still worth it to have a Lumix camera to get the most out of Lumix Lab because then you can transfer those LUTs you downloaded directly to your camera and bake those LUTs directly into the JPEGs and videos, skipping the editing process entirely. You can even develop the raw photos in camera with the raw editor as well if you just don't want to be on your phone. So there's like three different ways to get your intended look using Lumix Lab and a Lumix camera, which is Great. If real quickly, I want to talk about the newest update to Lumix Lab, which is called Magic LUT. It seems to me like this is designed for beginners who are confused at where to start and just want to replicate a look. It seems to use some kind of machine learning to analyze a frame you upload and translate that look to your selected photo. Let's, let's go over how it works. So basically, you're going to select a photo 
you took to edit. And right on that first page of editing where you select the LUT, the first option after original is going to be Magic LUT followed by the rest of the ones you may have downloaded. So of course, if you want to use Magic LUT, you hit the Magic LUT button and you choose from a reference image on your phone. And it kind of works like magic to put that look onto your current photo. Now, of course, everyone's first thought is probably going to be to use a frame from a movie to recreate a cinematic look. I think that's a fine use for this. So for my test, I picked movies with really distinct styles and I thought of The Matrix and Asteroid City and both needed some extra tweaking after the initial magic happened. But especially the Asteroid City one actually looks pretty nice. Of course, if I was using it for my own projects, I'd want to maybe use that as a starting point and tweak it later because personally, I would rather just be creating my own look for my own projects. But still, it is fun if you're doing like a spoof of a particular scene or film or something like that. But my first thought was using my own film photography to get a more filmic look. So I grabbed some of my favorite shots from my favorite stocks of film, something from Porter 800 or Cine Still, or even the super quirky Phoenix film from last year. I mean, personally, I use Film Convert for this sort of thing normally, but they don't have every film stock, especially like Phoenix. So being able to replicate some of the imperfect charm of the color of film, put some grain on it in camera, you get some really fun results. And I actually think I nailed some of the scans here, especially that like blue green highlight of Phoenix film. I was pretty happy with the presets I was able to make. And they seem to have thought of everything because you can also save that LUT to your library and use it just like the rest of the LUTs on the store page that you, we talked about earlier. There's also a ton more options inside this app as well like shutter remote, camera control, a live streaming feature that I have explored around a little bit, but I just wanted to mostly focus in this video on the photo editing LUT side of things. Hey guys, jumping in here real quick, just to say that videos like this take a lot of effort and work. I'm a pretty small channel still, so any interaction on this video would be amazing. A like, a comment, even a subscribe. I don't know what this hype button I've seen around is, but if you hype this video, that would be pretty hype, pretty sweet, pretty cool. Anyway, back to the video. <laughs> Jesus. Let's get to using Lumix LUTs and Lumix Lab in a more professional editing environment. So for people like me who don't want to risk baking in a super strong LUT into their footage or photos, especially for something like a wedding or certain photos, you can only really get the most out of them using raw photos or something like a flat vlog image. If you can relate, then this part of the video is for you. And this is especially the side of things I haven't really heard anyone talk about. And if you're on Mac, this process is incredibly easy. PC, there's like one extra step. So the first step, speaking of, is getting that LUT onto your computer. And that step is the same for photo or video. In fact, you can kind of use most of the same LUTs, both for video and photos. So personally, what I do is I go down to my list of LUTs, I select the ones I want to transfer, and I hit those three lines for more options. I then select share, and you can actually airdrop this straight from the app to your computer. If you're not on Mac, you can probably just email the file to yourself in the same way. They end up in the downloads folder, so just unzip them and you're ready to go. So first, let's talk about how I use these for video. So again, I almost always shoot in vlog for video, so I'll be talking about this from that perspective, but it's not that hard to use them in a 709 kind of workflow either. And again, like we talked about, this process I'm talking about kind of works with any camera from any manufacturer, Sony, Canon, even my DJI or iPhone footage. Many of the LUTs from Lumix Lab can be used with footage from anything. So how I handle this next part kind of depends on the LUT in question, but either way, you can import these LUTs via something like Lumetri Color in Adobe Premiere or the equivalent in Final Cut and Resolve or whatever you're using. You can either quickly import them via the Creative tab and LUT and just browse for them wherever they might be. But if you're going to be selecting these a lot, I would just, you know, find where those LUTs live in your app and just install them directly. 
So if you have a LUT made for V-Log and you shot in V-Log, make sure you turn off any and all color management, just the raw V-Log footage, and then either apply the Lumetri to your clip or to an adjustment later. Once you apply the LUT to that creative tab, you're pretty much done. You know, you can make some other adjustments to the clip or the adjustment layer or whatever. Personally, I use an adjustment layer usually because I'm gonna have a whole timeline of clips. I don't wanna apply the look to every clip individually, but hey, whatever floats your boat. But here's why I don't typically use V-Log LUTs from the Lumix Lab. The problem is dialing in the strength is a little bit difficult. So if it's a little too contrasty or a little bit too saturated or too strong of a look in general, you're kind of just pushing it back towards log instead of back towards a Rex 709 look. So typically I'm actually using standard profile Rex 709 type LUTs. So let's go through that process. If the LUT is based on something like, you know, natural, standard, something like that, then essentially all you have to do is convert your V-Log to a Rex 09 color space. So you can use color management. I typically am using the very cam LUTs. So something like nicest or fashion low contrast. And they're both fairly neutral. Don't add too much contrast or too much stylized color. But either way, no matter how you do it, after the footage looks normal, I do that same process again. I add a second layer of Lumetric color, apply my LUT, and then I can easily dial up or down the intensity without just going back towards that washed out log look. And of course, if you shot in something like natural or standard, this is gonna be the same process. You just don't have to convert it first. And then of course you can throw something like film convert or hazy or something here towards the end of the line as well to get some grain or glow or halation or whatever. You do you boo. If you wanna check out film convert, it's in my, you know, use my link and code in the description for 10% off get a little commission, helps the channel out a bunch. And so that's why I typically prefer the standard LUTs. They're just a little bit more flexible when applying them to converted log footage. So next, let's see how to use these LUTs when editing raw photos in something like Lightroom. And again, if you skipped here from the last section, this basically works the same. And again, also with any type of photo from any type of camera. You could even use it with JPEG, but obviously RAW is gonna give you that flexibility we're looking for. But again, it's just crazy to me that no matter what camera you have, Lumix Lab, especially with the Magic update, essentially just gives you free, infinite looks and Lightroom presets for free for any camera. That's my mind blowing right now. <laughs> So stupid. Okay, anyway, there's a few videos online that show the same process, but the biggest thing here is to get the LUT files into your editing software, in my case, Lightroom. And the easiest way to do this so that they're there, you know, do this every single time, is installing these into Camera Raw. The way I open it is by dragging a raw image into Photoshop, and that automatically pops up Camera Raw. I don't know if this is the best way to do it, but I don't know how else to open Camera Raw. Anyway, go to the presets and on Mac, option click and create file button. I think this is all click on PC. So all click create file. This lets you load the LUTs you want in as a profile to use in the future. So first you're going to name the preset, then choose what folder it's going to go to. Personally, I already have a folder dedicated to Lumix lab stuff to stay organized. Then at the bottom, you'll load the LUT from the .cube files you sent to your computer earlier and hit OK to save. Now you can see that all of our LUTs are here in the profile tab in Camera Raw. You can select with them, play with the strength, and then apply it to your photo to be edited like any other raw photo. And now if you close Camera Raw and open Lightroom Classic or Lightroom or whatever, you'll see that all those same presets in that same Lumix Lab folder are there and you can do the exact same thing. Select the LUT you want to use, adjust the strength and apply. And then you can edit normally with the same amazing flexibility that raw photos provide with that stylized look you can get from all the amazing presets on the Lumix Lab app. And I think that ability to just create, again, infinite presets is just wild. So yeah, I think by now you can see why I am calling Lumix Lab the best photo app ever. 
outside of the camera controls, super stable connection, fast transfers, and all that. The biggest thing really just comes from, no joke, infinite possibilities with all the amazing LUTs on this app. It can be used for photo, video, can be used to skip editing or to enhance your editing on a dedicated computer that can be used for photo or for video. It can be used to skip editing on a dedicated computer by baking those LUTs into your JPEGs and videos. It can be used to tweak your looks and edit in your phone when on the go, or it can be used on your laptop or PC for editing more in-depth looks and taking full advantage of RAW and Log. And like we talked about, it works for any camera. These LUTs can be applied to anything, and I think that is the real value of the app. There is really no one camera or one way to use Lumix Lab, and honestly, I constantly use it in all the ways we talked about in this video. If you thought Lumix Lab was just to skip editing or wouldn't work with your camera, now you know. It can potentially unlock a ton of creative editing options for you guys. So. Please let me know what you think of Lumix Lab and the way I've been using it. I really wanted to make this video for a long time because I haven't seen anybody talk about using this app in the same way and this magic update and the Lumix Lab update that they had was a great excuse to do so. So hope you like this video. Hope it wasn't boring. Hope this has unlocked some cool possibilities and and ways to use this app in your editing video workflow, whether you're a content creator, wedding filmmaker, or whatever. Thanks for coming by, thanks for stopping by, thanks for watching, and I'll see you when I see you. And I'll see you when I see you guys. You know I'm gonna see you.